Besides the normal color spectrum and the picker on the left, there's also another way that we can look at color in Photoshop, and that's color libraries. I want to explain a little bit about what we're going to find when we go into the color libraries. So I want to talk to you a little bit about color that we use for print. When you take a document to be printed at a commercial printer, you have the option to ask for very specific ink colors. So your choices are either to use process color, which would be CMYK, another name for CMYK, or you can use a set of colors called Pantone colors. So to give you an idea how it works, if you were going to paint a room in your house, you would probably go to the paint store and get some color chips that you would bring up and hold against your wall and see if it's the color that you might want to work with for your room. Well, for printing, we have that also. We can ask for very specific spot colors, and there's a company called Pantone that makes the swatches that we can choose our colors from. I'll close this dialog box and we can go here to the Pantone website. And you'll see over here on the left how they have these different swatch libraries. And they have them not only for graphics and multimedia, but they have them for fashion and home, plastic, like all kinds of um, color swatches that you can get, which is kind of cool because you could have a painting on your wall that has the same colors that match your drape if you wanted to by using these different color libraries. And this is a picture of what the swatch book looks like. And you can see that there's these little squares of each color. Underneath the squares, there's some writing, and that would have a particular Pantone color number. And then sometimes they also tell you what the equivalent CMYK or RGB value would be for that particular value. So if you've chosen a color from the Pantone swatch book and you want to use it in Photoshop, then you can go to the color picker to see that particular library. So I'm going to click on this foreground color swatch again to bring up the color picker window. And over here on the right, notice it says color libraries. If I click on the color libraries, it brings up a list of color books that you could choose from. So Pantone has more than one swatch book. So if you click on this list, you can see here the section for Pantone of all the different books that they might possibly have available right now. And so Photoshop and Pantone work together to make sure that these libraries are available to you. Notice there's also some other swatch books. So Pantone colors are used mostly in America, but in other countries you might be using different Pantone or different swatch books depending on where you are. So in the US we use Pantone. And Basically, we want to stay with either Pantone Solid Coated or Pantone Solid Uncoated. So when you're printing at a commercial printer, solid coated means paper that's going to have a glossy finish applied to it at the end. So kind of like glossy paper. However, that glossiness is not the kind of necessarily the kind of paper that you're using. It's a finish usually added after the document's been printed. And then we have uncoated if you're not going to put a finish on the paper. So I'm going to choose Pal Pantone Solid Coated for our swatch book. And then notice here I still have a hue ramp over here on the right. I can slide through for different colors that I might want to have. And then on the left, it has the Pantone and the number that goes with it. And then see the letter C at the end. This is reminding you that it's for coded. If I switch to uncoded, it has a U on the end for uncoded. And then there's also books for matte. So that number on the end is actually pretty important because the color changes quite a bit when you switch between coded and uncoded. So if I wanted to choose a particular color, I can type in a number if I knew what color exactly. So if I want to type in 256, I can type in 256 and it will take me to that number. And you have to just remember that. There's no real place. There's no search or anything. You just have to know that if you start typing the number, it'll bring you to that section of the particular Pantone swatch book. 
So here I've chosen a Pantone color and notice it has warnings for both print and for web. So for print, what they're going to do is make a spot color. It's not a mix of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. It's a special ink mixed specifically to get this particular color. And because of that, it's called a contract color. If you ask for this color, when the printer prints it, he uses a little densometer, he checks the color, and he makes sure that it matches exactly the Pantone color that you've asked for. So often things like logos will have a Pantone color applied to them so that you always get that exact color to maintain your branding. So a little bit about Pantone. You can choose a Pantone color this way and then choose OK. And that will be the color that you're working with now in your swatches panel.